Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back. In today's video, we will learn how to use punctuation marks. Punctuation is the system of sign or symbol given to a reader to show how a sentence is constructed and how it should be read. While sentences are the building blocks used to construct written accounts, they are complete statements and punctuation shows how the statement should be read and written to make the meaning clear. Let's very systematically know the definition of punctuation before knowing its uses. Basically, punctuation is derived from the Latin word punctum, which means the right use of putting in points or stops in writing. Therefore, punctuation is the art of using the proper marks so that the sentence can be made to stop at a point. Apart from this, it also does the work of separating sentences, phrases and clauses so that their extended meaning is made clear. Russell Baker explains the need for punctuation in a language beautifully. When speaking aloud, you punctuate constantly with body language. Your listener hears commas, dashes, question marks, explanation points, quotation marks as you shout, whisper, pause, wave your arms, roll your eyes, wrinkle your brows. This means that whatever is the spoken content, it need not require your special attention to mention the punctuation marks. For example, Doctor, the patient is very ill. When we say this, the doctor will automatically understand the conveyed message. So, we don't need to say it like, Doctor, comma, the patient is very ill. Further, Russell says, in writing, Punctuation plays the role of body language. It helps reader to hear the way you want to be heard. Here he says that in a written language, the words are not falling directly on the ears. It is written. So, it becomes obvious for writer to make the reader feel as if he is reading it. So, punctuation marks help him to make reader to hear the written text. And the principal punctuation marks are full stop, comma, semicolon, colon, note of interrogation or in simple language the question mark, the note of exclamation, inverted commas or quotation marks. Other than this, some punctuation marks common in use are the dash, parenthesis, the apostrophe and the hyphen. Now we will discuss them in detail. But keep in mind that there are exceptions to most of the punctuation marks. No two writers punctuate in the same way, as it is the matter of feeling and style, and fashion change even in punctuation. Likewise, come, let's see some trends of few punctuation marks here. Full stop represents the greatest pause and separation. It is used to mark the end of a sentence. For example, he is a gentleman. Speak gently. Here, in the first sentence, it is indicating that someone is gentleman and having full stop ends the sentence here. While the next sentence says, speak gently, which has another tone in itself addressed to someone to speak gently because he is a gentleman. Similarly, full stops are used in abbreviations and initials as M.A, that is MA, or Masters of Arts. Then, Dr. Radha Krishnan, UPSC, that is Union Public Service Commission. Note that Mr. and Mrs. occur without a full stop, as Mr. or Mrs. have come to be regarded as full spelling. Next in the line, we have comma. Comma represents the shortest pause between words. Its use is divided into simple sentence, compound sentence, and complex sentence. First, let's see its use in simple sentence. So, comma is used to separate a series of words in the same construction, like He wrote his exercise neatly, quickly, and correctly. Notice how the comma separates the words that belongs to the same bunch. 
Then, comma is used to separate each pair of words connected by and. And this can be understood through high and low, comma, poor and rich, comma, wise and foolish, comma, must all die. Now, notice here how the comma is connecting the words in a sentence. Then, comma is also used after a nominative absolute. A nominative absolute is a freestanding part of a sentence that describes the main subject and verb. Take for example, weather permitting, I shall see you at your house. Here, weather is the subject and permitting is the verb. And comma that is following these two words makes the other sentence separate but relating to the first portion. Fourthly, comma marks off a noun and phrase in opposition. For example, Kalidas, the great Sanskrit dramatist, died long, long ago. Note how Kalidas, that is a noun, is separated by two phrases. First being the great Sanskrit dramatist and other is died long, long ago. Next, comma marks off the nominative of address. Now, nominative of address means a noun naming the person to whom one is speaking. See here, come in the garden Robin. The phrase come in the garden is addressed to Robin and hence it is separated out by comma. Comma also marks off two or more adverb or adverbial phrases to come together. For example, then at length. Tidy justice was done to the memory of Oliver. Then it is used before and after words, phrases or clauses let into the body of sentence. For example, his story was, in several ways, improbable. Look how two phrases are being separated here from the word improbable. Then, comma helps to mark the omission of word, like here. Rama received a fountain pen, Hari a watch. It could be said as Rama received a fountain pen while Hari received a watch. But instead, the sentence is shortened by omitting while and received from it. And it is said as Rama received a fountain pen, Hari a watch. Next, the date of the month is separated from the year by using comma. Like, the earthquake of January 26 and using a comma, it is separated from the year 2001. So, it can be said the earthquake of January 26, 2001. Comma also marks off a direct quotation from the rest of the sentence. For example, he said to his disciples, watch and play. Here, see how the words that are uttered by the person are separated by a comma. And the clause explaining that what he said to his disciples is proceeded to comma. Now, the compound sentences. The compound sentence is made up of two clauses. And here, comma separates short coordinate clauses of a compound sentence. Like, the way was long, the wind was cold. See these two sentences or clauses are present in a single sentence but they are held together by a comma in between. Then, comma separates a clause beginning with a relative pronoun that is used in a continuous sense. Let's take example. Shambhu, who is a fruit seller in our school, comes from Gaya district. Shambhu as we know is a noun. It is separated from the rest of the sentence. That is itself describing or giving us details about Shambhu. So Shambhu, comma, who is a fruit seller in our school. Here, who is pronoun and it is separated from Shambhu by comma. Because if the sentence is written without comma, it won't have the essence of being heard while reading. Now use of comma in complex sentence. Here, complex sentence is a sentence formed by having coordinate clause or clauses. So, in this sentence, comma is used to separate adverb clause from its principal clause. As here, when I was a bachelor, I lived by myself. But also remember, 
when the adverb clause follows the principal clause or if it is short or if it is closely connected with principal clause the comma is often omitted as i like him because he is honest then comma are as well used to separate a noun clause whether subject or object that is preceding the verb for instance how we are ever to get there which is a noun clause is separated by comma from is the question so this is read as how are we ever to get there is a question next the adjective clauses can be marked off only when there are two or more of them or when one may be lengthy as this is the book which shakespeare wrote which the whole world admire and which thousands read every day now this is a pretty long sentence and to make it presentable comma acts as a mark of fashion and also it makes the sentence to the reader quite understandable comma again marks off a clause which is not restrictive in meaning but is coordinated with the principal clause as some people who are superstitious don't sail on friday now here the last clause don't sail on friday is coordinated one so in the sentence some people who are superstitious from the principal clause that is itself separated due to use of pronoun and is again separated at the end to conjoin with itself a coordinate clause in order to complete the meaning of the sentence now that we have known in detail about commas i have a little homework for you just a one not many tell me if you can in the sentence i came i saw i conquered where will you place the comma do let me know in the comment and thank you for listening to me the remaining punctuation marks i will cover them in the next video so stay connected for more and see you in the next one Thank you.